I've been speaking and learning English for over 20 years. Now, with a little more experience, I realize that there are certain things that if you pay attention to, can dramatically improve your level of fluency in the language. I wish somebody had told me these things when I was at the beginning of my English learning journey. So today, we're gonna give you one skill that if you master, can dramatically improve your English level in no time. So, Xena, one of our Fluency Circle members, Maria, sent us a couple of questions about this topic we are covering today, paraphrasing. Could you read her questions first? Yeah, of course. Can we improve our language learning system with paraphrasing? And the second question is, what are the pros and cons of using paraphrasing? First of all, Xen, I think it's nice for us to quickly define fluency here again, because we are saying that paraphrasing is the number one skill that every fluent English speaker has. Let's talk about what fluency is not, just to make it clear. So one thing I can point out here is that fluency is not about never making mistakes, okay? So being fluent in a second language or third language doesn't mean that you never make mistakes, that you speak perfectly. Yeah, fluency is about the flow. Guys, we actually did a podcast episode about this topic, really detailing the difference between fluency and proficiency slash accuracy. So if you want to check that episode out, we're going to leave the link in the show notes and also in the description here on YouTube. All right. Um, well, Xenia, let's talk about paraphrasing and how powerful it can be. First of all, what is paraphrasing? How would you define this? So paraphrasing, to put it in simple words, is saying the same thing as you read or heard from someone with your own voice how you understand this. Important point here, you should keep the meaning. Yeah, and I would say that this is the number one skill that bilingual people have or multilingual people have because being bilingual or speaking English as a second language fluently, for example, is not about knowing all the words, all the phrasal verbs, all the expressions, but it's about being able to successfully navigate the language and start conversations and keep conversations going, maintain them, all right? So if you don't know a specific word during a conversation, you don't let that block you or end the conversation right there. You find other ways to explain what you wanna explain, even though you don't know that exact word. This is, what, this is when a paraphrasing can be helpful. Using paraphrasing correctly is exactly that, using synonyms or changing the structure of the sentence. But it's not resorting to some filler words like, the, when, like remember those situations, when you are searching for a word and you can't name it, our first reaction would just say, well, this thing, this thing, well, you know, this thing. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, so paraphrasing is using the synonym instead of the word this thing. That's true, yeah. I think that th that could be a crutch. You know, there are certain sentences or phrases in English that they could act as crutches. They are not really ideal for successful communication, like this one, oh, like this, or stuff like that, or things along those lines. It's fine to use them, but don't overuse them. Ideally, yes, just like Sena said, you wanna use a synonym or another word to replace the word that you maybe couldn't think of. And talking about conversation, paraphrasing helps there too. It helps understanding. You are an English learner and you want to practice your speaking with another English learner, right? You heard a phrase, but you don't know all the words in this phrase, but relying on, some, on the context, you think you understood, but you want to double check. So you can paraphrase it and ask, is that what you mean? Did I understand you? Well, Xena, let's uh, give some examples now here to our followers. I have, I have compiled, actually, a couple of examples per level, focusing on the more advanced levels of English. So we're going to be giving you guys some examples of B2 level sentences and how you could paraphrase them. And then we're going to move on to C1 level sentences, more advanced. And finally, the last level, which is C2, the proficient level. So starting with the B2 level here, Joanne was in favor of visiting the museum. Well, one possible way to paraphrase this would be, Joanne thought it would be a good idea to visit the museum or to go to the museum. Here, we see that we changed was in favor, right? To, to be a good idea. 
right? Also, we change the word visiting, yeah, in favor of visiting to good idea to visit. So we change the class of the word and we change the phrase in favor or to think that it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people bitch about grammar, like, oh, it's all boring and everything. But guys, again, it's really useful to know some grammar. Look at this. We have in favor of visiting. Of is a preposition. The grammar rule is after a preposition, if you have a verb, that verb is in the ing form. But if you look at the second variation here, it would be a good idea to visit. Because I'm using to, it's the infinitive. So to visit versus of visiting. Studying a little bit of grammar can also help you better paraphrase ideas and sentences. One of the most frustrating things is when you learn new words and expressions, like the ones we are learning today. And when it's time for you to actually use those words in conversations, they don't come to you. You forget them. I know it's a horrible feeling, but there's a powerful system you can use to help you memorize all these words and expression. This system is called space repetition. Space repetition is a learning technique that involves reviewing and revisiting information at increasing intervals over time. The basic idea is to expose yourself to the information you're trying to learn in a way that optimally reinforces your memory. As someone who works in English, I can't stress enough how important it is to have an ample vocabulary. And we have made it easy for you to incorporate space repetition in your learning with the Real Life English app. With the app, you can learn terms of words, phrasal verbs, and expressions with our advanced technology that helps you review the words you're trying to remember by presenting the new vocabulary to you at strategic times. Thousands of learners just like you are already using the app to get confident, natural English. Wouldn't you also like to effortlessly use the right words and expressions when you need them? So if you want to go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker who actually remembers all the words you study, download the Real Life English app and give it a try. I'm sure you will love it. Go to Google Play Store, Apple App Store, search for Real Life English, or simply click on the link in the description of the video. I'll see you there. So for B2 level, the second example is Arthur has the talent to become a concert pianist. And the paraphrased sentence would be, Arthur is so talented that he could become a concert pianist. Again, we see some changes here. So we have to have the talent to become something versus being so talented that you could become something. The, the idea is the same here, but I'm using different words and different conjugation of the verbs. So the next comes uh, C1 level, right? My brother now earns far less than he did when he was younger. So focus on this part here. Now he earns far less than he did when he was younger. A possible paraphrasing here could be, my brother doesn't earn nearly as much now as he did when he was younger. Uh, first of all, we have this construction, as much as, right? Uh, that we changed it from far less than. Yeah, so there is a comparison. The first sentence, we have a comparison thanks to the word then. And in the second se sentence, the comparison is made with as much as. So less means not much, right? And in the second sentence, it was changed into doesn't earn nearly as much. What's fascinating here is that in the first sentence, right, the verb earn is in the affirmative, right? My brother now earns. In the second sentence, it's in the negative. My brother doesn't earn. But because of what comes after, both sentences are communicating the same idea. So the second sentence here uh, is also very interesting. Let's hear it. I'm disappointed with the band's new album when I compare it to their previous one. I think the band's new album is disappointing in comparison to their previous one. We see the change here. I'm disappointed right? Or the album is disappointing. In the first sentence, the main uh, focus is on you who are disappointed. And in the second se sentence, the focus is shifted on the album that disappointed you. We can also point out here the verb compare, right? In the first sentence, I'm using compare as a verb when I compare it to their previous one. But in the second sentence, I'm using comparison 
which is the noun form for compare, in comparison to. And this reminds me of that word formation lesson that we did together. Remember, Xenia? Those of you guys, check out that lesson on word formation. This is word formation, by the way, when you are able to come up with different variations of words, like, you know, from a noun to an adjective to a verb, like in this case, compare, comparison, disappointment, disappointing. Well, moving on to C2 level sentences here, I have a couple. Uh, they are even slightly more advanced. So look at this one. They think that Helen's brother stole the money. Helen's brother is suspected of having stolen the money. We see here a uh, change in voices. So the first sentence uses the uh, active voice, brother stole. We see someone did something, yeah, performer of the action. And the second sentence uses the passive voice. Brother is suspected of having stolen. And we say having stolen because it's in the past, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's the same exactly. idea as he stole the money. I think this sentence here illustrates well the difference between a more intermediate type of English and a more advanced type of English. So if you guys ever wondered, what is the difference between B2 and C1 or C2? Intermediate and advanced. This is it, guys. Look at the first example here. They think Helen's brother stole the money. This is simple past. It's quite okay, quite standard. It's the typical type of sentence you will use as an intermediate learner of English. But if you look at the second one, he's suspected of having stolen. That illustrates well the difference between more advanced language versus more intermediate language. Okay, guys. So the final sentence, and it's the second sentence for the C2 level, is the heavy downpour brought their picnic to an abrupt end. And the paraphrased. They had to cut short their picnic because of the heavy downpour. Mm -hmm. What a nice phrase here, cut short, right? I think we, we can define downpour very quickly here. What is downpour or heavy downpour? So when it's raining heavily, like a wall of rain. You see, so the, the heavy rain or the downpour brought their picnic to an end, to an abrupt end, versus they had to cut short their picnic, right? So when you cut something short, you end it prematurely. Exactly, abruptly. That was really, really advanced one as well. I really like the phrase, cut short. And uh, again, we change the structure, right? Uh, we see that uh, the first sentence, it starts with the downpour. The heavy downpour brought their pick into an abrupt end. And the second sentence, it ends with the downpour. We, like, you know, switch places. We started with... They had to cut short their picnic because of the heavy downpour. Mm -hmm. That's it. You see, so guys, it's fascinating to learn more about paraphrasing. And as you can see, paraphrasing is indeed the number one skill that you should be focusing on and developing as an English learner. So get into the habit of um, saying the same idea using different words. You will see how much you will, you will improve by doing this. Thanks for learning with us. You should know, though, that this was just a small bite or a short clip of the full lesson. If you want to listen to the entire lesson, download the Real Life English app for free right now and listen to the full version over there.